Hey guys, thank you so much for coming to this channel. I really do appreciate it. Guys, remember we are here to encourage girls to pursue science and technology. We are here to showcase other role models that are pursuing STEM. And we're here also to encourage the girls, young women, and anyone trying to get into this career so that they can also just see the technology, types of careers, role models, things like that. We're here to encourage each other, guys, especially the young ones that are just coming up because there are few women in this industry. So other women need to see that we are here changing uh, the narrative. So thank you so much, guys, for coming to this channel. If you're coming here for the first time, remember to subscribe, share us. We need to let the world know that we are here and we are changing the world. So guys, today I'm so excited. I have two amazing women here on this channel. And I'm going to bring first Chimwemwe. She's a high school student. Let's hear from her because we have uh, girls, you know, young kids that are trying to pursue science and technology. And we really hear from them. What are they doing? How are they getting into this uh, career? And if you go back on my videos, you will see also other young women who have been on this channel, how they share their journey. Guys, I'm so excited. Let's bring Chimwemwe up. Let's see uh, what she's doing. Hi, Chimwemwe. Thank you so much Hi. for coming. I'm so excited to have you here. How are you doing? I'm so excited to be here. I'm well, thank you. How are you, ma'am? I'm fine, fine, fine. So glad to have you. So, Chimwemwe, let's dive into that. I'm sure there are other uh, people who will be viewing us, who will be seeing us uh, at this conversation. I want to know Tell, uh, share with my viewers, what are you doing today? Who are you? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. My name is Chimwemwe Mwansa. I am 18 years old. I'm a matric student, a grade 12 student, so a final year in high school. And mm. I want to pursue STEM that integrates medicine. Because we all know how the future is working. Um, coding and technology is like the future and it's going to be an integral part of the future. So I just want to hit the ball where it's rolling and already apply myself in the subject. So currently I take the subjects life science, physical science, computer applications, technology and applied mathematics. And right now I am preparing for my preliminary exams and then my final exams, and I am um, going through the application process for universities, um, which I applied biomedical engineering. So I applied for a biomedical engineering. And I feel like biomed biomedical engineering is like an integration of all the things that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. I took an interest in STEM, um, in the STEM field, when I was about in grade 10 or grade nine choosing subjects, I looked at um, how the world is moving and how we're getting so um, technology-based and everything is um, being advanced and using AI. And I was really interested in that. And also, on the other hand, since I've been a child, I've wanted to become a medical doctor specifically for children, so specializing in pediatrics. And to integrate those two was a challenge, but I, I took um, computer applications just to take it as a hobby, and then um, in future integrate it. And then when I found out about biomedical engineering, it changed the game. Um, I completely changed my career path, and I want to use that as a pre-med course so that I can be a medical doctor in the future with an intense ICT perspective. So, so many things um, have factored into this decision, and I'm really grateful to be a part of the women in STEM to be a face for the coming girls because there's so there's so much of a lack of misrepresentation in STEM for girls today. So that's oh where I am. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm just so proud of you, Chimwemwe, and you are doing amazing. Um, the sky is the limit and also uh, we can't wait to see your space. And it's amazing, guys, you know, how she articulates to technology. I just love it to see women uh, speaking like this. And I can assure you, uh, Chimwemwe, 
you have a surprise for your future. I'm telling you, you will be amazing. And it's true, technology is evolving, especially in the past decade. Uh, technology has evolved tremendously because most young ones are asking, oh, what career can I pursue? And I like how you determined how you wanted to join into computer science programming because in the next decade, even coming more years and more years, uh, STEM is going to be integrated at another level, especially where uh, everything is going to be uh, technologically advanced in terms of programming, using computers. Before, we still had engineering, remember, but it wasn't integrated so much into computer science, into programming things, again, making our lives much, much better. So, wow, that's really interesting. So, Chumwemo, I want to find out, do you have people around you who are in STEM, or mommy, or daddy, or aunties? Well, how did you really go into STEM? Because we want to find out, how do these people who become engineers, what is going on around them? What's surrounding them? How did you get into STEM? What's going on in your young age? For example, if I take you back to when you were like five years old growing up, what's going on there? Um, what I can say is that um, in terms of STEM, I knew about it, but I wasn't truly exposed to all the information surrounding it. So um, when I was in grade um, 10, one of the, not in grade 10, last year, so like yes. when I was in grade 11, um, a girl in my class posted on her status, like, her receiving a present as a phone. And I was so intrigued. I also wanted a phone. And yes. I saw in the caption, it wrote, Vodacom code like a girl. And yes. I was so intrigued. And I could spot opportunities easily. So I asked the girl, how did you, how did you learn to code? Because she said code for girls. So I was yes. so interested. And fast forward. I entered the program during my holidays. I sacrificed my holidays because I was truly intrigued in how coding affects us um, and the way we live and how it can relate to me as a woman and a girl. Yes. So finally, um, I entered the competition and I also won the competition. I'm really fortunate to have won it. And I learned so much from the program, from the speakers. The speakers really represented to me what a female right now in STEM looks like. And I really saw myself portrayed in there. There were so many different personalities, so many colorful um, personalities that were coming up. And there was not just one face for STEM, because we all know about STEM at this moment in time, but we don't know how and we can't see how it relates to us. So I was truly um, exposed. And I, dive, I dove like I dive deeper into research about STEM, and here I am. So wow. I think that was my turning point. Vodacom code like a girl was my turning point. Wow, that's really amazing because you speak to um to be to be curious, and I'll tell you something. That's all is all about to be curious. Once you are curious you can do amazing stuff. For example, I work in space missions, right? And I was curious to see how do planes fly? How does it feel to be on a plane? How does it work? How, the, how does the wings work? What do they spend in space? And space was so mesmerizing for me. It was um, something that I was thinking about, what's there? So that's really a good point where guys we get so curious and here is chimwemwe so we can't wait for her to see her space how she goes and she really loves stem she will be part of this um a girls uh girls for stem usa guys so you will be seeing her a lot of times on this channel so we really thank you for coming here to, to come and share what you're doing. And what particularly in uh, computer science are you trying to uh, pursue? Is it programming uh, in combination with medicine? How specifically is, are you thinking about your career? Um, my career, so the degree that I'm currently hoping to get into is biomedical engineering. So yes. this um, degree composes of physical science, engineering, mm -hmm. biology, as well as coding and IT. So yes. this is just like a combination of all my passions in one degree. So I'm taking the approach of coding yes. um, to integrate it into medicine, yes. 
Wow, amazing, amazing. So girls out there, you see how you can uh, get into STEM. You need to be curious, determination, and always researching as you see how Chimomo is going about. So thank you so much, Chimomo, for coming. It was nice having you. And uh, we're expecting to see more from you on this channel. Whatever you can share with us, how you're doing, whatever is going on, it's really, really great for us here and also the young girls coming up to see that. So thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. See you soon. And you can still stay uh, in the studio and go uh, continue watching as we have our next um, person that we're going to interview. Thank you, Chimwemwe. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow, guys, amazing. I really, really love talking to young ones. And remember, I always share on this channel, when I was growing up, being into uh, trying to pursue science, I stumbled, guys. I really stumbled. I didn't see anyone who looked like me who pursued science and technology. I never saw anyone like me who was working. So sometimes I wondered, will this make sense? Will I ever complete? What's going to happen? I really, really uh, stumbled in that area. And that's why we're here to encourage young ones to uh, see role models, people like us who are pursuing science and technology as few Wow, thank you so much to Chumwame. Guys, we have uh, our next uh, visitor here on this channel. Her name is called Chitalu. Guys, I've seen Chitalu growing up when she was young. It's so emotional for me to see that she's an engineer now. It's very, very, I'm very, very passionate and I'm really touched by her. So you're going to see this uh, young lady who just got first licensed in Zambia land surveyors. Guys, why do we have so few women in this world? She's an, one of an example of few women pursuing engineering. Guys, before I yap so much, let's bring her up right, uh, right away. Hi, Chitalu, how are you? Thank you so much for coming to Girls for STEM USA. I, I'm really, really excited to speak with you. Thank you so much. Hi, how are you? I'm actually very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Wow. Oh, my God. Guys, I saw her growing up and now she's an engineer. So let's dive into right away. So Chitalu, what are you doing today? Who are you? Can you share with my viewers? Okay. So right now I'm working for the Zambia Ministry of Lands in the mm -hmm. Surveyors Department. Yeah. So Basically, what we do in the survey department is uh, uh, bound, we deal with boundaries, um, property boundaries, the Zambian boundary, and everything like that. We help facilitate, we help with the facilitation of survey diagrams and uh, people who want to get title deeds for their property. Uh, we also do the mapping of Zambia and stuff like that, yes. Wow, wow, that's cool stuff. And you know what? There are few women who would even think about your career. That's so exciting about that. So before we, we go there, so how does it feel to be the first woman who have gotten a license in Zambia, land surveyors, a first woman? How does it feel? I'm actually very proud of myself. Yes. I didn't think I would get this far. Yeah, I never actually thought... I would be here someday, especially with being a woman and all the discouragements that we get. Yeah. Wow. We are so proud of you. And I'm sure those young women that are growing up, seeing you as the first Zambian uh, licensed as a land surveyor, it's amazing. I hope so many women can see that it's something doable. Of course, it's a difficult, engineering is a difficult uh, subject. Everybody knows uh, career, but guess what makes us get to here? It's the determination that helps us get to this place. So thank you yeah. so much. We are so proud of you. And we we are, we are just so mesmerized by your uh, prosperity. So now let me also ask you one question. I've seen you grow up uh, as a child from when you were about five, six, seven years year old. It's so you know. For me, I just feel so honored to be speaking with you. So I want to take you back to when you were young. 
especially those times when you were a little, I was seeing you. Did you see anyone around you trying to do engineering or something like that? Could you share with my viewers? How did you get into STEM? Um, weird enough, I'm actually the first engineer in my family. Wow. So um, I'm not really sure how how I actually managed to get myself. But all I know is that from the time I was in high school, I wanted to be an engineer. Really? And do you yes. remember where you heard that word engineering? Or did you see anyone around you that's pursuing engineering or what? Okay, yes, I have. Se I, I would say a couple of engineers, but when I was younger, I wouldn't really get it, you know, when they're making the roads and everything, I would be there mostly cheering for the big vehicles <laughs> and the equipment there. But I I think it's just something that I got to learn about in uh, high school and as mm -hmm. I was pursuing uh, my career goals. Yes. Yeah, because I remember before that, I wanted mm -hmm. to be a doctor because that's yes. what I was exposed to at the time. I knew who doctors were, but unfortunately, I did not know who engineers were. Wow. Wow, that's amazing, guys. So sometimes, you know, you get interest as you go. When most people talk about it as, um, you know, the things that are surrounding you, uh, people that are surrounding you help. Sometimes we may not even notice that you saw something or you heard something or you have somebody around you. Actually, you know, science tells us that that's how we begin to, uh, we start having this interest of pursuing science and technology STEM. Wow, that's really interesting. So now, um, Chitalu, what are some of the challenges that you faced when you were actually at school, growing up, trying to be an engineer? What are some of those challenges? Could you share with my viewers? Um, I think the major challenge that I faced is mostly people telling me this is not for girls. Yes. Engineering is not for girls. We should stick to something else, maybe try something English related. But I've always loved mathematics and chemistry, to be exact. I will not say science. Yes. Because biology here and there yeah but then i was uh, those were my favorite subjects mathematics and chemistry and some physics yeah so mostly the major challenge that i've had is people telling me this is not a girl's thing and a girl cannot do math and there's a saying that goes uh there's a saying that i've had throughout high school and university where they say you cannot be pretty and know how to do math. I'm not sure if you've come across that yes. one. Or yes. where we are told to say <laughs> university, we had that one where they said there's no such thing as a pretty engineer. Can you imagine what a discouragement? Yeah, and so, we strike that but with a red mark. We strike it. Here we are, girls. Uh-huh. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they'll tell us um, a girl cannot be pretty and smart. So all those things, a girl can't do math, a girl is better at English, a girl, all the, those were my challenges. But I thank God my mom, my mom has been very supportive of me. Yes. Yeah, she she's always told me I can do anything. So even growing up, she she allowed me to experiment, especially coming from a Zambian background. We have yes. what you call girls do this, boys do that. Yes. Yes. So my mom allowed me to have a, a feel of both worlds where I can actually play with dolls and I can actually try and invent stuff, come mm. up with things, try and build stuff. And I think I might not by then understand that that was engineering on its own, growing up but it it's an interest that i had and i had a lot of people tell me no you're not supposed to do that a girl should only do this a girl should only do that but my mom told me no if you like to do that go ahead and do it so as 
as I was growing, I was exposed to such things like, okay, how does this work? How does this machine work? How do you do that? How do you do this? So even when I got to high school and found out about engineering, yeah, and then I went to high school in the copper belt. So yes. basically what I was exposed to are mine engineers. Yes. Yeah, so I wanted to be a mine engineer. Wow. Yeah, so I said, I'm going to be a mine engineer. But then when it was time to go to university, there was that rumor saying all mines in Zambia are going to close. Wow. Yeah. So uh, after that, that's how come I had to go to the university and ask for some career guidance. Uh -huh. And that's, that was actually the first time I heard about a, a surveyor. Yes. Yes. The time I went to the university, just right before I could apply, that's the first time I heard about a surveyor. So my, by then, I knew what a mine engineer is, an electrical engineer, a civil engineer. So the, um, when I went there, what I was told is uh, a surveyor actually works with mine engineers and civil engineers. Uh -huh. So that's how I actually picked my um, career path. Wow. Which is actually strange and everything. But that's how I actually picked my career path. I wanted somewhere where I could work with mine engineers. And if I couldn't work with them, I could at least work with civil engineers. Wow. But that's, yeah. So being a surveyor, aka a geomatic engineer, was the best. I think for now, I think I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> this is what I want to be you know one of those careers where you feel okay I was born to do this yes yeah, that for me right now wow so what do you enjoy most about your job um mostly I think the the traveling yes. and um getting to meet different people and the challenges that we face yes so you you get to deal with different things. And uh, geomatics engineering on its own is actually a very wide discipline. Yes. So right now I'm actually doing just a part of it. Wow. Yeah, so I've actually been, I've actually done some uh, engineer, um, uh, engineering service which is not what I'm doing right now. Right now I'm doing cadastral surveying. So engineering yes. surveys where we work with the civil engineers, the, yeah, with the buildings, the roads, that's engineering survey. And then uh, right now I'm doing cadastral surveying, which is the property boundaries mm -hmm. and the mapping and stuff like that. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's so interesting. And, um, as engineers, we are all related and we need each other. For example, I work for, uh, I, I, I was working for space mission, now I, uh, for space systems, now I'm in mission systems. So in space, we also need to map the ground, right? We need to map, we need that information so much to use it in space. So when you say that this career is like so wide, so what do you understand about space and your career? Is there something you can relate and share with oh, us? Yeah, actually, yes. Actually, we actually have those disciplines as well. So we have what you call geodesy, which is the study of the shape and the size of the Earth. Yes. Yeah, and then we have what you call remote sensing, which is actually what you're talking about, the taking of aerial photographs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we have photogrammetry, which is actually the interpretation of those yes. aerial photographs, yes. So we also use, I'm not sure if you are, you use this software, something like geographic information systems and softwares like that. Yes. We actually even do some programming. That's for Chimwemwe as well. Yeah, so Chimwemwe should, interested should in know. Programming. And we actually do that. that as well. <laughs> yeah, we are all intertwined. 
we need each other. And the goodness about engineering is it's so vast. And once you're an engineer, guys, there is nothing that you cannot do or venture into uh, or uh, do a master's into that, it, uh, whatever that is. That's one good thing about STEM. Once you are in STEM, guys, the, the sky is not the limit. Remember, we just sent the James Webb telescope. We just sent the James Webb telescope. I don't know if you know, guys, the biggest telescope man has ever made is in space. Um, we just sent it, and it has taken so I mean, magnificent pictures in space right now. Uh, they're trying to take pictures as far as 13 billion years far. Can you imagine? Ooh. That's the biggest, and I, I'm so glad I was part of, of working on that telescope. So it's just interesting. So wh why am I saying so? We are so much intertwined as engineers in things that we work on, in things that we might be working on, or things that we can venture into. So as you are saying, Chikalu, you are in survey, um, land survey, but you still, you can still understand so many things and even careers that you can venture into, programs that you can do. Uh, you know, Chimuamu, Chimuamu can also join us and do, oh I mean, I just love STEM, guys. I hope you're excited as I am excited about STEM and that we are going to, uh, in the next coming decade, every area of a discipline will be part of STEM. Can you imagine? And I know people, are, they say, are you talking about STEM, STEM? I'm not a STEM person. In the next coming decade, years, there won't be such an answer that I'm, I'm not part of STEM because it's all going to be STEM. Wow. Thank you so much to uh, Chitalu for sharing that uh, with us. So how many women were you in class uh, when you're doing your courses normally? How many women? Um, we, we, we four. We were four. Yeah, in wow. my final year, we were four of us. Yeah, in a class of that, uh, about, I think, 34 or 38. Yeah, wow. so we only had four women in class. Wow. Yeah. That is so just uh, wrong because we are supposed to be. Yeah, you it's know, wrong because yeah. there actually we have some classes with no women at all. Wow, wow. So we need to make sure we can share this information. And guys, that's why I'm passionate here to uh, preach this, to just share with women, uh, young women, nieces, if you have nieces. Tell them, guys, that this is something that changes not only their lives around them, but also just their knowledge of understanding things around them. It's just a powerful uh, career if you pursue into. So um, the other thing I wanted to find out, um, uh, Chitalu, so um, when you get a, a license, what, what things can you do, amazing things that you can do when you get a license? Um, okay, so basically what the license is, it allows you to practice on your own. So it's more like how people see it. I'll give an example of lawyers because most people understand that. The way yes. lawyers sit for the bar. So that's how we sit for our license to practice surveying. We have mm -hmm. a theoretical and a practical part. So basically, I can actually work for myself without being under someone else yeah so now i can have people work under me and yeah so on and so forth yeah so basically it allows me to work f for myself before if i if i were if i wanted to do something survey related i needed to do, have a licensed land surveyor back me up in short i had to work for a licensed land surveyor just like lawyers, yeah, you have to work with a um, licensed lawyer and stuff like that. That's how surveying also works. Okay. Wow. Thank yeah. you so much, Shalu. So what's the difference between uh, land surveyors and civil engineers? Do you know the difference between the two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Land surveyors and uh, civil engineers actually work very hand in hand in, yes. um, in, in what we like to call engineering survey. 
where the land surveyors basically we deal with the positioning where we position the where the building is going to be the elevation of the building we make sure the building is not crooked and all that whilst civil engineers um are focused on the design the material and the actual building of the building after we show them where the the position of the building and where everything is supposed to go according to the plan wow so it's exactly what you wanted to see that you want to work with the civil engineers you want to work with the mines so that will be perfect for you 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 really fit that yes Wow. So what would you say to a girl growing up in uh, maybe uh, in Zambia or here in America uh, or in deep areas where they don't they're not exposed to engineering? How can you encourage them to pursue science and technology? Uh, OK, for the girls and ladies out there, I think one thing is switch off the negativity. No one, no one should be able to tell you what you can and cannot do. You know what they're capable of. And engineering is actually a very good career. And um, it's, yeah, it is difficult. But if the man can do it, we can actually do it better and in heels. And that's what I would tell myself. Everyone, every time someone said, no, you can't do this. I, I would say I can do it and I can actually do it in hills. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately for me growing up, we did not have STEM or at least I was not exposed to it. Yes. And I'm very glad that now there's, there is STEM and, there is, and we are here to help the young ladies career-wise. I'm sure there are ladies that want to do something different, but that do not know they can or that that actually exists. It, as long as you are focused, you are capable of doing anything. There's no such thing as girls cannot do this. We can, as long as it's a career, it's out there, we can do it. Wow, wow. Once upon a time, we could not even go to school. Yes. And but look at our are. friends in other countries, what they are going through. It's very sad that they cannot go to school just because they are women. Can you imagine? You know. So, wow. Thank you so much, Chitalu. Thank you so much. We can't wait to have you again on this channel. I really do appreciate and again, guys, this is the first female to get to be licensed as a land surveyor. So women out there, you can do this. Let's join Talu as well. And you know what? Let's also encourage other women, pull them. You know, I always say pull, like pull them using a rope to advise them, encourage them so they can also get to where we are. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate. I hope you can come again and share with us what's going uh, on uh, in your career. So I can't wait to come back. Please have me as soon as possible. Yes. And yes. to the girls out there, the future of engineering is us. Let's show them what we've got. Let's actually show them because let's actually show them that we can actually do this so that they stop stereotyping us where they look at us, especially early in my career. I had when Immediately, someone looks at me and says, "Oh, a lady, it's not going, it's not going to work. She's not going to manage to do this." <laughs> but once upon a time, I would be on a site with about two hundred men and be the only female there. Wow. Yeah, and at first it was like, "Okay, why am I here?" But then, as time goes went by, I actually would not notice I'm the only female there. Yeah. Someone had to remind me to say, "Oh, do you know you're the only female here?" I'm mm. like, "Oh yeah, I am. That's good. That's great." Yes. And then as time went by, I kept meeting more and more female engineers, which mm -hmm. I'm glad. We actually even now at the office we have a very few, but now at least the numbers are, are growing. Even yeah. universities, at least the number of enrolled engineering students is growing, which I love. And I also love, like Chumumwe said, as young as she is, 
She's already decided on what she wants to do. She knows she wants to be a girl in STEM, which yeah. is great. I would love that even as young as primary schools, we, we girls should be able to know that we are capable of being engineers and yeah. not just what the say females should be, a career specific for females. No, we can do anything. We've got this. Yes, yes, we got this. Wow, thank you so much. So we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much and hope to see you again one more time and many more times. Thank you so much, Talu. All right, thank you very much. And bye, everyone. See you next Saturday again. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye.